Hello everyone, I'm Raphael and welcome to Network Engineer Pro. In today's video, I'll be covering CDP, which stands for Cisco Discovery Protocol. CDP is a Cisco proprietary layer 2 data link layer protocol used to discover other nearby directly connected Cisco devices and how they connect to the network. It's supported in both IPv4 and IPv6. CDP provides valuable information of its neighbor, like the host name, IP address, OS and model version, its capabilities like if it's a router or a switch, port IDs you're using to connect to the device, duplex information, native VLAN, and more. So if you've ever configured mismatch duplex settings or mismatch native VLAN between two switches and you've seen an error that says native VLAN mismatch or duplex mismatch, you can thank CDP for that. Now, these values are actually encoded inside something called a type length value or a TLV. Each Cisco device with CDP enabled will send these periodic CDP messages to a specific multicast address of 0100-0-CCC-CC-CC. Those same CDP enabled devices listen to that address to discover each other. By default, CDP is enabled globally and it will send CDP messages every 60 seconds. When a directly connected device receives a CDP message, it will hold on to that message for 180 seconds. This time is called a CDP hold timer. So as long as the device keeps receiving CDP messages, all is well. Once no CDP message is received on that interface from its neighbor for over 180 seconds, that CDP information for that neighbor is removed from the table. Now, CDP has two versions, version 1 and version 2. Version 2 is on by default and it provides way more information than version 1 was capable of. Version 1 didn't support things like the native VLAN mismatch or mismatch duplex between ports on two devices. Version 2 does and that's why it's better and enabled by default. All right, so I have some Cisco devices connected. Let's hop on the CLI and let's see how we can make sure that CDP is configured and working properly and how we can use it to map out a network. All right, so you can see in the upper right hand corner that I have two devices that are directly connected, switch one and router two. Let's go on switch one and make sure that CDP is in fact enabled. So from privilege exec mode, I'm gonna do show CDP and it's telling me information about the global CDP process. It's telling me that I'm sending CDP packets every 60 seconds. I'm also sending a hold time value of 180 seconds and that the type of CDP advertisements that I'm sending are CDP version two. Remember, CDP version two is enabled by default. So if we wanted to turn CDP off, we can go to global config and just say no CDP run. Now, if we do show CDP again, it's going to tell us that CDP is not enabled. If I try to do show CDP neighbors, again, CDP is not enabled. Let's go ahead and turn CDP back on. All right. Now that I enabled CDP again, let's give it a few seconds for a CDP message to arrive from router two. All right, perfect. We have received a CDP message from a device named R2. And this is gonna be the host name. The host name of R2 is R2. The local interface is my interface on switch one that I'm using to connect over to R2. So you can see in the diagram that I'm connecting to R2 using my gigabit zero slash one. The whole time is 161 seconds. The capabilities of this neighbor R2 is router and source route bridge, which has to deal with token ring. I'm also connecting to router two on its gigabit zero slash two port, which again matches our diagram. If we wanted to see some detailed information on R2, we can say do show CDP neighbor and use the details keyword. This is gonna give us a lot more information in addition to what we saw earlier. And some of the new information is the IP address. It found an IP address on R2 and we can use this to connect to router two. The platform is Cisco. Again, I'm using my local G01 interface and I'm connecting to router twos or R2's G02 interface. Here's some version information, Cisco iOS software, CDP advertisement version versus version two. And again, the IP address that it found could be used for management so I can connect to router two using this IP address. Let's hop on router two and see what its CDP neighbor information looks like. So from privilege exec mode, I'm going to do show CDP neighbor. It's telling me that router two is connected to a device named switch one or SW one. The local interface is router two's interface that it's using to connect to switch one, which is G02. The capabilities of this neighbor switch one are gonna be router, switch, and IGMP. And the port on switch one that I'm connecting to is gonna be gigabit zero slash one. Let's look at the detailed information. So show CDP neighbor detail. 
Look at all this information. It's again telling me the device ID of the neighbor is switch one. It also found an IP address on switch one 10.10.12.1. It's telling me my capabilities, still telling me the whole time, and some Cisco IOS version information. It's letting me know that the advertisement version is two. The VTP domain is blank. It's also telling me my native VLAN is one, my duplex is full, and that IP address that it found earlier can be used for management. This is one of the benefits of CDP version two over version one. CDP version one will not give you this native VLAN or duplex information. Okay, so when we did our show CDP neighbor detail information, we saw that the IP address it was sending us was 10.10.11.1. Let's look at the IP addresses configured on router R2. So I'm gonna do show IP interface brief. I'm gonna pipe and I'm gonna exclude anything unassigned. I only wanna see interfaces that have IP addresses assigned. Great, so we have gigabit zero slash two, which has an IP of 10.10.11.1, and we have a loopback zero with an IP of 1.1.1.1. I wanna send my CDP advertisements to switch one using this interface's IP. I don't wanna send it with the IP of 10.10.11.1. So what you could do is you could say CDP, you're gonna have some options. You can, by default, we're advertising version two, but if you wanted to disable Version two, you could say no CDP advertised version two. We also have filter list. This has to do with secure CDP. Uh, we have hold time. So instead of leaving it to the default of 180 seconds, we could change it if we wanted to. And here's what we want to find. We want to find its source interface. So I'm going to say CDP source interface. And I do question mark. I'm going to do loopback one, loopback zero. I'm sorry, source interface loopback zero. I also want to change my CDP timer to instead of being every 60 seconds, I want it to be every 30 seconds. So it's gonna be sending them at a faster rate. Now, I also wanna change the CDP hold time. Instead of being default at 180 seconds, I wanna set it to 60 seconds. Now let's hop back on switch one and let's see if we have a different IP address in our show CDP neighbor detail information. In the entry addresses, our IP address that we have is 1.1.1.1. That's one of the ways that you can change the IP that shows up in the CDP neighbor detail information. All right, I want to show you now a packet capture of a CDP advertisement, both version 1 and version 2. All right, so with our topology, I've been capturing on the Gigabit 01 interface of Switch 1. And let's look at some of the details of the CDP message. So let's look at this first one here. When I look at the Ethernet header, I see a destination MAC address of 01000C, CC, CC, CC. This is the special MAC address that I mentioned earlier, and it's not just used for CDP, it's also used for VTP, DTP, PAGP, and UDLD. Now let's look at the actual contents of the CDP message itself. We can see that we're using version two. The TTL is 180 seconds. This is our hold time. The device ID, look at all these things, device ID, software version, platform. These are the type length values or the TLVs that I mentioned earlier. These are the blocks of information that is used in the CDP advertisement. So we can see that the device ID is switch one. We have some port information, G01. Here's our capabilities. Under IP prefixes, this has to deal with ODR or on-demand routing. We can see our VTP management domain, native VLAN information, duplex information, and management address. Now let's compare this to a version one CDP message. Version one, it has the device ID, the software version, the platform, and not much else after that. Remember, there's no native VLAN information, there's no duplex information, there's no VTP information in the CDP version one packet. So that's why CDP version two is enabled by default because it provides more information. I mean, how long would it take you to troubleshoot a native VLAN mismatch or a mismatch duplex if you didn't see the little error messages popping up every 60 seconds? It'd probably take you a lot longer. That's why CDP version two is better. All right, so now that we saw how we could make sure that CDP is in fact enabled, we also saw that we could change the CDP interval to a faster or a longer rate if we wanted, in addition to changing the default hold timer. We also changed the source interface to make sure that the IP address in the show CDP neighbor detail is what we want it to be. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna show you how you can use CDP to map out a network. All right, so here's a scenario. You just started a brand new job as a network engineer. Your coworker just retired the day before you started and he left no sort of network documentation, no topology diagrams, nothing. Your boss just came up to you and said, hey, I need you by the end of the day to draw the network and figure out how all the routers are connected to each other. 
and we have six routers total. We don't have any sort of network mapping software or tools, and we need to use CDP to get this done. So let's get started on router one. So from router one, we're gonna do show CDP neighbors. We see that router one is connected to router two. Let's go ahead and draw this out. So we have router one and it connects over to router two. From router one, we connect locally on our G0 slash zero interface and we connect over to router two's zero slash one interface. Let's hop on router two and see who it's connected to. All right, so from router two, I'm gonna do show CDP neighbors. Router 2 has three connections. It connects back to R1, which we already know, and it also connects to Router 3 and Router 4. Let's draw this out. So Router 2 connects to Router 3. It also connects to Router 4. We see that from Router 2, it connects to R3 locally on its G0 slash 2 interface, and it connects to Router 3's G0 slash 1. From router 2, we also connect to router 4 locally on our G00 interface, connected to router 4's G0 slash 0 interface. And we connect back to R1, which we already know about. So let's hop on R3 and see its CDP neighbors. All right, so let me check the CDP neighbors on router 3. So I'm going to do show CDP neighbor. I see that I connect back to R2, which is expected, but I also connect to router 5. Let's draw this out. So we have an R5. From router 3's perspective, I connect to R5 from its G0 slash 2 interface, and I connect to router 5's 0 slash 1 interface. Let's hop on R4 and, and finish mapping that one out. So from router 4, I'm going to do show CDP neighbor. I see that I connect back to R2, which I already know about, but I also connect to R5. Let's draw that out. So from router 4, I connect to R5 locally on my 0 slash 2 gigabit interface. I connect to R5's 0 slash 2 interface as well. Let's hop on R5 and see what its CDP neighbors look like. So from router 5, I'm going to do a show CDP neighbor. And I see that I connect to three devices. I connect back to R3, which I already know about. I also connect back to R4, which we know about as well. But router 5 also connects to router 6. Let's draw this out. So from router 5, I connect to R6 locally on my 0 slash 0 interface. I also connect to router 6 on its 0 slash 1 interface. Awesome. Let's go on router 6 and see who it connects to. So from router 6, I'm going to do a enable and then show CDP neighbor. Router 6 only connects to R5. And we already have that drawn out. Excellent. We've just mapped our 6 router network before the end of the day. Your boss is very happy and you look like a superstar on day one. So you can see how CDP can really be helpful in understanding your topology and drawing out your network. So CDP isn't the only network discovery protocol out there. There's another flavor called LLDP or the link layer discovery protocol. It's pretty similar to CDP, but the main difference is that CDP is Cisco proprietary and LLDP is not. LLDP is an open standard and it can be implemented by any vendor. One last thing I'd like to mention is that CDP messages are sent in plain text. So contents like IP address and native VLAN information can be seen by anyone who can capture the data or anyone who's on a CDP enabled device and does a show CDP neighbor. So it's recommended to disable CDP on ports like ISP facing ports on your internet edge or implement secure CDP. That's about it for CDP. I hope everyone enjoyed this video and learned something. In the next video, I'll be covering LLDP or the link layer discovery protocol, so stay tuned.